Good morning. Hope everybody's having a great weekend, and I hope that this service now is your high point. We are continuing yeah. our series, Group Therapy, uh, which had such a great kickoff last week. Yes. And uh, today you're in for a treat, too. But first, a quick yes. announcement about Custom Summer Camp. Yes. So Summer Camp is coming up faster than we realize, um, always, but always. definitely one of the highlights of the summer for our high school and middle school students. Yeah. We have camps for each of them. High school is already sold out. Yep, yep. Um, we've got a few spots left for middle school, but it's such a high point for these kids. Such a great opportunity to just yeah. grow in their relationship with Jesus as well as grow in community That's with right. other kids. Yeah. Um, so we, like our daughter has gone the last couple years. She just adores it. It's yep. so amazing. Yep. Um, but you know, we do have kids every year that really want to go, but just don't really have the means to be able yep. to pay for it, which is where you potentially could come in. That's right. Um, we would love for people to consider giving um, to scholarship these kids so yep. that they can go and have yep. amazing encounters with Jesus, yep. even if their families are not quite able to pay for the full amount. Yep. So if you go to camp.fyi, you get all the information on that. Yep. We would love for you to pray about that and consider it. Absolutely. This is another way that you can have an impact on the next generation. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, hey, uh, group therapy, again, this series is so powerful already. Thank you to those of you who uh, joined our virtual group that kicked off last week. Yeah. You're still open to new people joining. Um, but I know that you're in for a treat today because Pastor Chip Judd yep. is bringing the message. Uh, yep. We had a lot of people at our first service already say, man, I'm going to have to listen to this one again. So I want to encourage you to pull up the mobile app. And at the bottom of the right, you'll see uh, the button for message notes. You can follow along with Chip on his points, take notes, send those to yes. yourself, and continue processing all that God says to you through this message yep. uh, throughout your week and stuff. So don't miss that opportunity. Hey, it's about time to join yep. the rest of the campuses, but let's ask God to bless our time. Father, thank you so much for your spirit that is working within us. God, we give you our hearts and minds this morning as we worship you. We ask you to speak to us. Give us clarity on what you would have us do uh, as we learn today. And in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, you guys, let's worship. Yep.
Christ is my firm foundation.
Jesus because he will never fail you. He will never, for, he will never forsake you. The Bible says in Psalm 103, praise the Lord of my soul. Praise him with everything that's within me. Praise the Lord of my soul and do not forget any of his benefits. The text, the text continues saying that there is freedom in the relationship that we have with Jesus. The text continues saying that there is healing as we come in contact with Jesus. And that is my prayer for you this morning. That you can find freedom. That you can find healing. That you can leave this place knowing that there is a God that will never leave you or forsake you. Father, we come into your presence this morning because we believe God. We believe your word. Our hearts are expectant. We are here to lean into you, to hear a powerful message that's going to change us, that's going to change our heart, that's going to change our mind. God, bring freedom, but above all, God, bring healing to the minds, to the soul of every person in this room. And if you believe that, can you say amen? Amen. If we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Glacy Rowell. I'm part of this amazing family called Seacoast. Whether you're in the room, whether you're in one of our campuses, or anywhere in the world, bienvenidos, bienvindo, welcome to Seacoast Church. We're so glad that you chose to worship with us this morning. Get ready for a powerful message. Pastor Chip Jad will be coming up in a few moments with, as part of our series group therapy so why don't you look at your neighbor and you greet him saying welcome home welcome to seacoast of the water was to make things thrive and the purpose hasn't changed today for some that might look like stepping into the water for the very first time ankle deep for others it might look like pushing out a little bit deeper until you're swept up in a current that was stronger than you ever imagined surrender is the pathway to gaining something we can never lose we will have to be willing to step in the water into the presence of God if we want to thrive. It's the only way it works. How y'all doing? All right. I'm Chip Judd, one of the pastors here, and uh, looking forward to spending these moments with you. Uh, a couple of things. One, uh, man, if, you, uh, if you're getting baptized today, or if you have, obviously, we're proud of you too, but just so proud of you, man. Most important decision you'll ever make in your life is what you choose to do with Jesus, and uh, baptism is the follow-up to that, and it's such a cool thing. So we're just proud of you. Also, uh, the Manning Camps has got a big day going on. And uh, let's just pray for them real quick. The, uh, they've got a big day as far as some advances they're making building-wise. And uh, let's just pray for them that it's, the day just goes smoothly and wonderfully, all right? Father, in Jesus' name, we pray for our Manning Campus, Pastor Aaron and uh, the other leaders that are over there. Uh, we just pray that you make today so special. Make it uh, not just come up to their expectations, but exceed their expectations. And we thank you for it, sir, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How many have grandkids? We have grandkids? Can you indulge me for a moment? I've got to say hello to Brady, Ruth, Gus, Winnie, Ruby, and Paisley that are watching in Austin, Texas. So bless you. I love you all. All right. <clears throat> 
We're in this series called Group Therapy. I, uh, I have to admit, I really, really enjoy getting in your heads, man. I enjoy just like tinkering, like almost like getting in there with a spoon and stirring your brain up a little bit. So uh, hopefully we're going to have a little bit of fun as we do this. Just in case uh, you're not familiar with me, I am uh, I'm a pastor on staff here and uh, been a pastor for 43, four years-ish. Uh, but more importantly, maybe, is I'm also a professionally trained counselor. And I've spent about 40 years in the, what I call the guts and glory of people's lives. I've counseled individuals, marriages, dogs, cats, birds, <laughs> all of the above for 40 years. And uh, every time I say I've heard it all, God has a sense of humor. And it's like within the next week or two, he says, ah, you didn't see that one coming. So, uh, but I've seen a lot, heard a lot. And what we're going to talk about today is one of the most practical and powerful things I've learned in 47 years walking with God. Not the most important. The most important, of course, after Jesus, is learning to receive and rest in the Father's love. But this is a, is a practical teaching. I don't know that I could have been a pastor and a counselor for this long and survived without what we're going to talk about today. I want to talk to you about a proven path to better relationships. Say better one time. And less stress. Say less. How many of you'd like some better relationships and less stress? Raise your hand, all right? Just want to make sure I'm in the right room, you know? Better, how many of you know better is not perfect? You got me? And less is not zero. How many of you believe God could do something in this room this morning to where your relationships are better? Do this for me one time. Just that much. How many of you know that much is good? So this morning, if you'll pay attention... And, and God will show up like we hope he is and feel like he is already. Um, and you practice what we're going to talk about. I believe you could experience better relationships and less stress. All right, let's start with the scripture. Let's go back to the beginning of the book and actually where all of our problems started. Back in Genesis chapter 3. If you're not familiar with it, it's what we call the fall. But let's read it and it's going to push us into the subject we want to talk about today. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'll explain what this is up here for in just a minute. Now, the serpent was more crafty. The serpent, of course, we would say is Satan, our enemy in the spirit. Now, the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat from the fruit the fruit from the tree that's in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. The enemy says, surely you won't die to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was there with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. Now, we could go all kinds of directions with this. But I want you to think about what, what, what's happening here. God created everything that is. He created this beautiful planet, the stars, the everything. Dogs, cats, trees, everything. And he put mankind, you and me, Adam and Eve, on this planet. And he said to them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth and subdue it. In other words, take care of the planet. Bottom line is God said this, enjoy the heck out of it. Explore it, enjoy it, love it, take care of it. And then he said this, but, and it's like he took a tree, one tree, one tree in the whole planet, and he drew a circle around it. And he said, but don't mess with this tree. All of this enjoy to the fullest but don't mess with this one tree. What did he do? Anybody know the word for that? He set a boundary. He put a boundary around that tree. Now here's a thought for you. <clears throat> God, one of the first things God did was establish a boundary. The first thing the enemy did was challenge that boundary. Now how many of you agree we've been struggling with boundaries ever since? How many of you know sitting here that you need help with your boundaries? Just say yes. You know what? Relationships, 
finances, emotional management, um, you know, parents, children, spouses, friends, coworkers. Problem with our boundaries. How many of you agree with this statement? More people suffer from trying to change or control others than any other disease. How many of you agree that we expend a fair amount of energy trying to change and or control other people? We might need something. We need something, not wrong. But what if we're looking to them to meet a need that maybe they can't meet on their best day, but we try to control and change them so that they meet that need? We're going to talk about boundaries and how they can be a challenge for all of us. Now, let me warn you, we're shifting into what I would call workshop mode. What does that mean? I'm going to talk to you as if we were at a seminar and you chose to be in the workshop on boundaries. Why am I telling you that? Because I'm going to throw a bunch of stuff at you. And if I do my job correctly, you're going to leave here either mad, glad, or sad, or all of the above. Because boundaries are kind of tricky. They're kind of tricky. All right, we're in this little workshop on boundaries. How many of you would be interested in learning and practicing a concept that will help you enter into rest? Yes or no? You want any of that? All right. I'm going to read a couple, so just let me know if you want in on this. Is there anybody here that would be interested in learning and practicing a concept that will release you and others from unrealistic expectations? Yes or no? You want some of that? How about free up your relationships from destructive cycles? How about release God's purpose in your life? Not your mom or dad's or uncles or aunts or kids or friends, not even your pastors, but God's purpose in your life. How many of you know there's people that love you that have a plan for you? You understand what I'm saying? There's people that love you and they have a plan for you. How many of you would like to learn to become more emotionally stable? Now, are we supposed to be this? Just a flat line? No, that is actually unhealthy. That would be a mental health issue. But are we supposed to be this? No, we're supposed to be kind of, you know, life knocks us and it takes us a little while to recover, but we recover nicely. All right. How about a, a teaching or a concept that would help you raise healthier, say er, why did I say healthier kids? How many of you understand that your kids are going to be a little jacked up? <laughs> why are your kids going to be a little jacked up? Because you raised them. <laughs> Here's the deal. If you all haven't figured this out, it might be the best gift I give you today. You're a little bit jacked up. You're going to, you teach what you know, you reproduce what you are. You're going to raise kids that are a little bit jacked up. Adjust your goals. Your job isn't to raise kids that are perfect. Your job is to raise kids that are a little bit healthier than you are. And then if they raise kids that are a little bit healthier than they are, and on and on, how many of you know, I don't know, three, four, five generations, we could be in pretty good shape. But just settle it. Your kids are going to be a little jacked up. Are you listening out there? <laughs> All right, here's a couple of scriptures to get us going. He who is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he who rules his own spirit than he who takes a city. Now, why did I read this scripture? Because here's what I hear when I read that. God would be as proud of you if you learned to manage the person sitting in your chair as he would be if you led one of his armies and captured an enemy stronghold. How many of you know it does interesting effects on the people around us when we don't manage ourselves well? And we got to learn how to wrestle with these boundaries. All right, another scripture, very similar, Proverbs 25, 28. A person without self-control is as defenseless as a city with broken down walls. Now, written at a time when they would build walls around the city and they didn't have the equipment to do what we could do now. A wall wouldn't stop you today, but back then it would. So the point is they built devices to protect them from things outside they didn't want inside. And honestly, things inside they didn't want to get outside. Now, here's the deal. 
God wants you to learn how to define and defend your personal space so that you keep out what you want out and you keep in what you need in. All right, we're going to talk about boundaries, and that's where this thing comes in. What are boundaries, and how can they help us experience better relationships and less stress? So we're going to kind of spend a few minutes doing this workshop on boundaries. Now, here's what I want you to do before I even get going. Imagine everybody in the room has a hula hoop around them. Everybody in the room has a hula hoop around them. Why? You'll see what I mean in a minute. Because it helps you conceptualize the boundaries and where they start and stop. All right, what are boundaries? The invisible property lines of my life. How many of you know if you own a home, how many of you know how far to mow the grass and how far to, you know, where to stop and start, right? Even if you don't have a fence, you kind of know, here's my yard, right? Now, you go over in the other guy's yard and mow his fence, mow his yard, he's either going to pay you or shoot you, one or the other. <laughs> the bottom line is know where your boundaries are, right? Everything inside is me. The basis of my personal identity, boundaries are the basis of mine and your personal identity. What is me and what's not me? Boundaries are where I stop and others start. The most fundamental boundary we have is what? Skin. It's why violations of touch are so damaging and hurtful because it's a violation of our boundaries, our essence, our safety. All right? Boundaries. Here's a big one. Boundaries define who I am and for what I'm responsible. Who I am and for what I'm responsible. What do I mean? This is the, this is the big concept of the day. Everything. Say everything one time. Everything inside my boundaries is my responsibility. Everything inside my circle is my responsibility. Everything inside your circle is what? Your responsibility. Everything inside the person next to you's circle is whose responsibility? Theirs. Everything inside my circle is my responsibility. Everything inside your circle is yours. Make sense? The key word with boundaries is the R word responsibility. Say it one time, please. Responsibility. Anytime I think of boundaries or hear boundaries or see people talking about boundaries, the first word that pops in my head is responsibility. Now, important question. Am I alone in here? Am I alone in here? Well, you're afraid to answer. <clears throat> Who's in here with me? God is. How did he get here? invitation. Did God just kick his, the door down and break in? Revelation 3.20 says this, behold, I stand at the door and knock. Anyone who hears my voice and opens, I'll come into him. God's in here with me. Why is that important? How many of my needs can God meet? Virtually all of them. Now you're going to need to remember that as we get deeper into the message. So what's inside my circle? My feelings, my attitudes, my choices, my thoughts, my dreams. What word keeps repeating? Mine. What's inside my circle? My goals, my sexuality, my beliefs, my fears, my opinions. You see where I'm going? Now, if we were changing around and I said this, what's inside your circle? I'd say your feelings, your attitudes, your choices. Are you with me? Who's responsible for your feelings, attitudes, and choices? Just Let me just, like a way to think is this. Who's responsible for my feelings? Where are they? They're in my circle. Who's responsible for everything inside my circle? I am. All right, the secret to God honoring boundaries. Three words. I believe they always run together and always in this order. Responsibility, authority, and power. Responsibility, authority, and power. God always defines your responsibility and then gives you the authority and power to carry out your responsibility. He will not, does not, give you authority and power to carry out things that are not your responsibility. All right, R before A. R before A. What in the world does that mean, dude? Here's the deal. If you ever want to get healthy with your boundaries... Learn to think not how much authority and power do I have, how much responsibility do I have. 
If you start with responsibility, you automatically answer the question, how much authority and power do I have? How many of you have ever been to a store, grocery store, Target, whatever, and you look across and there's a kid over there, I don't know, it's five, six, seven years old, and this kid is pitching a fit, like going crazy, loud, tantrum. How many of you have ever thought to yourself, give me three minutes in the bathroom? <clears throat> now here's the deal. Why can't you do that? Not your responsibility. Therefore, you don't have what? The authority and power to do anything about it. Really important. The other one is R equals A. In any situation, it's very, 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 very simple to figure out how much authority and power you have. How much responsibility you have. Guess what? If you have zero responsibility, guess how much authority and power you have? Zero. Can I mess with your heads a little bit? Bible says when you get married, leave, cleave, leave, cleave, become one. Leave, cleave, become one. Leave who? Mother and father. Guess what? The moment you say I do, you have no more responsibility between you and your parents. Wait a minute. Did you say none? I said zero. I said zero. Oh, but my mom wants me to come home for holidays. I don't care what she wants. You're not responsible for meeting her wants. Well, she'll get angry. You're not responsible for her anger. Where's her anger? It's in her circle. Now, can you choose to go home? Absolutely. But if you make her responsible for your choices, what are you giving her? Authority and power to control you. Leave, cleave, become one. If you didn't, don't leave well, it's hard to cleave well. And if you don't cleave well, it's hard to become one. You with me? I could tell you some stories about that one. Experience it firsthand. My mother-in-law at our wedding, uh, you know where you get to the rehearsal and you get to the part where the pastor says, who gives this woman to this man? You know, forgive me for what I'm about to say. I, was a, I wasn't a Christian at the time. I partied and smoked pot. And I, I was a little bit in a fog. I wasn't high per se, but I'd been high so much, I might as well have been. So I didn't catch it. I didn't know till years into my marriage that my mother-in-law pulled the pastor aside. Now listen to the psycho psychological and spiritual impact of this. She pulled the pastor aside and said, I don't want to say that. And he said, well, ma'am, what do you want to say? And she said, who brings this woman to this man? What was she not doing? She was not giving me her daughter. In other words, in her mind, her daughter was in her circle. And she wasn't letting her go. Now, do you think that maybe caused a little bit of trouble for us? It did. Who got stuck in the middle? My wonderful wife. Not me. I like a fuss. I like a fuss. I, I was down for it. I was down for it. A few years later, we were, we were, uh, had a couple of kids by now. I don't know if it's Ruth, the one watching. I'm messing with my daughter. Um, but, but whatever, her mom and I were fussing again because we fussed a lot. And, um, I was, a, I was a Christian. I got saved a month after we got married. Thank God. And, um, we were fussing again, her, her, her mom and I. And um, she was kind of in my face and mad, and like so mad she was crying. And she said, you're trying to take my daughter from me. Now, we've been married like three years, four years, five years. I don't know. You're trying to take my daughter from me. And how many of you thank God for the Holy Ghost? <laughs> I just very calmly said, no, ma'am, I already did. <laughs> now, here's the deal. That's a boundary issue. Are you with me? All right, learn to separate things you want to happen from things you're responsible for making happen. Learn to separate. I want this person to act this way toward me. Nothing wrong with you wanting it. But if you take responsibility for making it happen, you're usurping illegitimate authority and power. Make sense? All right, I got a couple that's going to help me make a point here. 
All right, Charles and Tiffin. See, these are better trained. Last time they got applause. I didn't get applause, but they got applause. So I appreciate y'all not clapping. No, 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 stop. That's just wrong. It's just wrong. All right, they're married, husband and wife, literally. They really are. And I want you to understand, Charles is in the circle, Tiffin's in her circle. There's another circle that separates the two of them. Don't ever mistake that they live in a circle called a marriage. But inside that circle, they each live inside a circle. Who's responsible for everything inside Charles' circle? Who's responsible for everything inside Tiffin's circle? All right. Go ahead, Charles. You make me mad. <laughs> now, what did he just do? Where's his anger? It's inside his circle. What did he just do? He just made Tiffin responsible for his anger. Now, whether he meant to or not, what did he give her? The authority and power to control him. He gave up the responsibility, which isn't good, and with it went the authority and power. Go ahead. You make me sad. All right, where's her sadness? Inside her circle. Who's responsible for everything inside her circle? What did she just do? She gave him responsibility for her sadness. What does that mean? Whether you mean to or not, what goes with it is the authority and power to control you. Responsibility is the key to the whole thing. If you retain the responsibility, you retain the authority and power. If you relinquish the responsibility, whether you mean to or not, you're giving up the authority and power. If you take responsibility, like I'm going to carry the desire to keep him from being angry. It's my job, my responsibility to keep him from being angry. What happens is you have to operate in illegitimate power and authority because you don't have the power and authority to keep him from being angry. Only he has that, and he's not alone in there, right? All right, thank you guys. <clears throat> Whatever. It wasn't that good. I'm teasing Charles and Tiffin. All right, what do healthy boundaries look like? If you have healthy boundaries, here's a couple things that are going to be true. You know yourself like yourself, and you're able to be yourself. If you have healthy boundaries, you realize the you that's in the circle is the only one you're ever going to get. And do the work to figure out how to be okay with the one that's in there. How many of you agree with this statement? Comparison is the root of all inferiority. All right? If you have healthy boundaries, you know yourself like yourself, you know to be yourself. You've learned healthy ways to get your needs met. You've learned healthy ways to get your needs met. Simple thought, God first and most. God first and most. Say that for me. God first and most. God, say it again. God first and most. When I wake up in the morning, the first thing I do is, God, you there? Yeah, chipper. You love me, sir? Oh, I love you, man. What am I saying? I don't lean over to see if my wife's in love with me. When I was learning this, I fired my wife. I fired her. I said, you're no longer responsible for meeting my need for love. I want you to love me. Love it when you love me. Enjoy it when you love me. But you're not responsible for meeting my need for love. You following me? If I don't feel loved, it's not your fault. All right, if you have healthy boundaries, you're able to say no and hear no without paralyzing fears. How many of you agree it's hard for Christians to say no? We just think it's wrong or something. Say no for me one time. No. Say it real loud. No. Say it real soft. Say it real high. No. Say it real low. Here's the deal. Practice saying no. You're in your car alone. No, 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 no. And then tape, tape a picture to your mirror of someone who's hard to say no to. And you're driving by yourself. Practice. I said, what don't you understand about N-O? Just get after it. Now, don't do that part. But I am serious about the first part. Practice saying no. Practice saying no. How many of you agree with this statement? If you can't say no, your yes is pretty worthless. If you can't tell me no, when you say yes, how can I be sure it's genuine? If you can say no, then when you say yes, wow, 
I can take that to the bank. All right, here's a big one. You allow others to experience the consequences of their choices. This is a big one. Little Johnny. Johnny, he's four. Pick up your blocks and you can have a snack. Come back a few minutes later, blocks all over the floor. Oh, Johnny, I guess you don't want a snack. Yes, I do. No, sir. I said, if you want a snack, pick up your blocks. You didn't pick up your blocks. Apparently, you've chosen you don't want a snack. Now he's 12. Johnny, make your bed before you go to school, or when you get home, you're going to sit in your room for 30 minutes with no electronic devices. Johnny comes home. About 11 o'clock, he's sitting in class. Oh, I forgot to make my bed. Johnny comes home. Bed's made. Cough, I mean, uh, coffee. <laughs> Milk and cookies on the bedside table. Nobody ever mentions that he didn't make his bed and clean his room. Is Johnny learning anything? Please don't say no. He's learning that his mother or father or both are liars and cowards. They don't mean what they say, and they're afraid he won't like them. So they can't enforce consequences. How do you learn to make good decisions? By making bad ones. If you pay for them. You make a bad decision and somebody else pays for it. You make a mess and somebody else cleans it up. Yeah, you learn something all right. You learn that I can live however I want and somebody else takes care of it. How many of you think that's a pretty bad model for life? Definitely for marriage. All right, what do you do about all this? How do I develop healthier boundaries? How do I develop? Where do I start? Number one, start with your circle. Start with your circle. How many of you ever thought this thought or heard it? Well, if you will, I will. You go first. I hope you like the condition you're in because it's not going to change. Work on the one thing you can do something about. Work on the one person you have direct responsibility over and therefore some authority and power to change. Freedom comes from taking responsibility. Bondage from giving it away. When you take responsibility for what's inside here, you become more powerful. When you give it away, you become weaker. Number two, own your emotions. Don't blame other people for what you're feeling. Now, can I act in a way that makes it easier for my wife to have a good day? Absolutely. But am I responsible for my wife having a good day? No. No. Figure out what you're responsible for, own it, and work on it. Third one, last thought, build a support system to help you through this process. Because here's the deal, boundaries are more caught than taught. Learn appropriate ways to get your needs met. Commit to a small group of people who are slightly healthier than you are. Look around like, hmm, they look a little bit healthier than us. I promise you, this is a weird promise, but I promise you, if you find a group of people that are a little bit healthier than you are and commit, I'm going to hang out with them for a year and you don't do anything else different, you change one thing, I'm going to hang out with people that are a little bit healthier than I am for a year. I promise you, you're going to be healthier. Now, this much, I don't know. But this much, for sure. If you just make that one change, you'll be amazed at how much difference it makes. Find loving people who will speak the truth to you and do whatever you have to do to keep them in your life. Whatever you have to do. All right, let's end by reading the serenity prayer together. It should pop up up here. Most of you are probably familiar with it. Let's read this out loud together. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Let me pray for you. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for these awesome folks. They're so hungry and attentive 
They want to get life right. And we all start at different places, God. Meet us where we are. Help us. Help us build, heal, grow to produce the life that you have in mind for us. And we thank you for it, sir. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now we're about to go into response time. Let me mention something. This Wednesday, 12 to 1.30, sorry, fellas, Sisterhood is doing a lunch and learn. I'm speaking. I'm going to take boundaries and do an expanded, slow, deeper Q&A, everything. 12 to 1.30 this Wednesday. Ladies only. Sorry, fellas. Um, all right, response time. Built around two questions. God, what are you saying to me? What am I going to do about it? Um, the candles, the cross, communion, prayer. You might go to a candle and say, God, uh, I want you to work in this challenging relationship. Maybe you got a relationship where you know the boundaries are not what they should be. Go to a candle. God, I'm praying for like me 30 years ago, me and my mother-in-law. Maybe you go to the cross and you say, God, I, I've got boundary issues. I'm not taking responsibility for things I should and I am taking responsibility for things that I shouldn't. Take communion and remind yourself that you're not alone in there. And ask for prayer from someone, one of the teams. All right? I love you guys. And uh, later.
Man, what an incredible message on boundaries from Pastor Chip this morning. Uh, I know so many of us are going to be unpacking that and processing for weeks, if not months. And uh, so grateful for Pastor Chip and what he brought this morning. Hey, uh, I'm thinking of our friends watching on Adobo tablets at institutions across the country today and uh, opportunities to serve and whatnot. And, you know, we've been able to reach so many of them. Um, and it's such a blessing. I think of Jesus talking in Matthew 25 where he says, whatever you've done for the least of these brothers or sisters of mine, you've done for me. And so we know when we serve people in need or, or people incarcerated, uh, we're serving our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so I just want to encourage you, uh, if you're not actively serving uh, right now at Seacoast Church in some way, shape, or form, this is a great opportunity to make a difference with those folks watching us on Adobo Tablets um, through a partnership with Crossroads Prison Ministries and engaging with them in Bible study through mail correspondence. And so it might sound a little bit intimidating to you, but Crossroads makes it easy. They train you on exactly how to go about it. They've got the studies and materials already prepped for you. And so just want to encourage you as a great opportunity to serve those in need. Um, if that interests you, again, you can do that by just, just participating right from wherever you are. You don't, don't even have to leave home, but uh, take out the mobile app uh, on your phone, click on the connect card, select Seacoast Online as your campus, and click serve at my campus and you'll see the Crossroads Ministries opportunity listed there and uh, submit that form and we'd love to get you connected with Crossroads for training and um, you can start making a difference today. Yes. Well, and I'm always so just amazed by the generosity yeah. um, of this church, right? Amazing. And this yeah. is a great example. We have people who are able to watch on the Adobo tablets yeah. thanks to um, all of you who right. are giving and being so generous, as Absolutely. well as another great example of that would be those of you who are who have helped with scholarships for our yes. custom camps. That's so right. We mentioned That's earlier right. yeah. um, that we're you know in need of yeah. some of those as well. So yeah. we thank you so much. Um, if you've come prepared this morning to be able to do that, we've got a couple different options. And so you can go to seacoast.org slash give, yep. or you can click give in our mobile app. Um, to be able to worship the Lord that way today. Absolutely. Thank you guys again for joining us and worshiping with us together today. Again, invite a friend. Everybody needs to hear this message. Everybody has relationships. Absolutely. And so everybody needs to understand the everybody. concept of boundaries. Yeah. And uh, so invite a friend to join us. We've got several more service times this week. So, hey, let's be dismissed now with God's blessing from Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine, according to his power that's at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. 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 We'll see you guys soon. Yep. Have a great week.